Sadhguru. There are many teachers, just as this is Sadhguru, who is really established in that knowledge and truth. And also, he is established not only in truth, but he is practicing and his life is pure. His motivation is no other motivation, but only the motivation of the good of the uh, good of the student. That means the one that only that student should be benefited by that, so that their life becomes fully illumined. That should be the motivation of the student, or the teacher. So this type of teacher who has no other purpose, no other uh, intention, no other string attached. That should be the teacher. And to get to such a teacher it does not happen in life unless God's grace is profusely upon that person. That means this such a Vedanta text is emphasizing in two points that we should get such we should take refuge in such books. Such what are the such books example? You take refuge in the Bhagavad Gita. You take refuge in the Sarman on the Mount. You take refuge in the Dhammapad. That type of book. You take refuge in the books like and in our tradition there are many books like that. Uh, you see Holy Mother's Holy Mother's sayings and uh, look at that even you see Brahmananda Maharaj's uh, message whatever instruction. Swami Birajananda Swami's book talking about what is spiritual life, how to intensify that, all these teachings are there. You will not get that book. Or if that book comes even, you will ignore. You will find some other book. You take shelter. Shelter means you find joy in reading other books. But when your God's grace comes, God takes us to the right person and right type of text to read. That's why it is called uh, the read only the books of realized people who have have their own experience. Suppose someone visited Paris and he gives the description and someone only read in the book and gives the description. Will they be same? So that is the point. Those who have visited that place, that means that that knowledge and wisdom, or even not reached, but gone the long distance, more than me. He can be a guide. So that's the point that it is God's grace. It is it is not an ordinary thing. That's why it is said that as long shakshat anugraha, see what by what meaning you can go on page nine. Yavat as long as shakshat means the direct anugraha, the grace, is no jayate, not obtained. From whom? Parama Ishwarat. From the Supreme Lord or God. Tavat, eh? that long, kachit, no love it. That person will not obtain. What, what they will not obtain? Sadguru, a true teacher a person of genuine spirituality and neither no va nor sat sastram the right type of scriptures also so this is very important that means who you got it you are fortunate meaning that if you have the right type of book which leads you to real spiritual how much confusion about spirituality tell me People think that I have this experience, that experience, I see this light, see that light. Yes, see that light, see that light. Is it changing your character? Is it making you highly spiritual, selfless, loving, caring more than that I was yesterday? Today, is it little bigger, better? So, experience that these are all maybe signs, but who can tell that it is genuine? Or it is not. Many people are going to psychedelic treatment. No, that is not spirituality. You are stimulating your certain nerve center by some medicine. Yes, it gives you certain type of experience. But it is not yours. 
some medicine is making that what you should be you should experience that naturally by your uplifted mind ramakrishna when he used to have that ecstasy and come down he used to relate those experiences no that experience is happening spontaneously and express and when that experience is happening probably those nerve centers they get stimulated uh, this is the opposite way not being spiritual not practicing this uh, all the yama niyama the rules and morality and all these good virtues just you take some drug and what you become a slave of the drug and drug is good for some time so long you are in that mood but when the drug effect goes you are fallen into the ground it is much worse than that of as you are in a normal life so there is a danger so who will say it is genuine or not your teacher can tell you what is true experience and why you have to put emphasis where to ignore uh, even if you have little experience you think but that may not be the right experience you need not have to pay too much attention to that so this will be guiding factor who will do that a teacher can do and your scripture will say you will read ramakrishna's gospel in every time you will find that he is talking about what will what is the result of spiritual practice no your inner joy will increase your love for others will see you will see something divine in everywhere are they coming or only seeing some light and this and that this is a hallucination that may be the hallucination your mind is creating if it is not life changing don't trust that if it gives momentary things momentary things can be got by so many ways so this sat sastra will tell you sami christ will say knock and it shall be open unto thee uh, seek ye first god and all everything else will be added unto you so there is straight cut there is no drug there is no dealing there is no um, adjustment of this and no technique christ is saying knock finish one simple word try to knock here and see who is there the door will open so this is the thing that's the value of reading the right type of book and who you will get in, interested there is i i know hundreds and thousands of people are in i mean drug and they they are good people they are searching for truth they are searching for illumination but who will say it is right or wrong and who will they listen to that if someone tells so they should be ready to listen and god should provide that environment that person should come in life that type of scripture should be at your hand so it is so much important in spiritual life and there is much chance of getting just misunderstanding the spiritual life in practice wrong things main thing it should be life transforming it should be more and more uh, asserting your own inner dignity in our spirituality in our potential power eh? people around you will feel that you are a spiritual person <clears throat> we know addicted people you go to addicted people we know he is addicted because it is not inspiring to others it's not normal it should be above normal though spirituality is above normal but that can be stimulated by something don't get to stimulation rather let it be natural you should absorb the spirituality in every pore of your body spontaneously you will feel the thrill of joy and looking at your face everyone will see that wow what are these people where do they get see ramakrishna in read the gospel ramakrishna when he used to go to calcutta first first when they anyone sees ramakrishna is very unassuming no one gets to look at him what a very ordinary guy and no glamour nothing but when he starts talking and in that mood his mind is moving the glaring light the joy the peace radiating everyone's attention is focused on that no one can deny that so that is the beauty that spontaneous spirituality 
Uh, and that we want. Not to be dependent on any other agency, any other object, material, or we are reading today in the Bhagavad that uh, material, some material substance. What is the substance? Substance are those. Uh, he, oh, so, true teacher is necessary. Now, that's why there is, they have given a note. How, how many types of kripa or, or, or kind of grace is there? First is that three, three graces are necessary. First, we need God's grace, Guru's grace, and your own grace. You should be gracious to yourself. You should be searching for the right thing. You should not take wrong steps in the name of spirituality. So your grace is necessary first. Atma Kripa. See, first one, the grace of the self. On page 9, note number 3. It says there are four kinds of grace. The grace of the self, Atma Kripa. Grace of the Sastra. The scripture is teaching us. Unless Shastra is called, the scripture is called like mother. If you nurture it with love and affection, this scripture will reveal in your heart. As if like a mother helps the child to uh, know the truth. So here, that is the grace of the scripture. Grace of spiritual teacher, Guru, Guru Kripa, and grace of God. So, four types of grace, no? But they have emphasized first point, your own grace. You like to go this way or you like to go this way. First you have to decide and you should be kind and compassionate to you that I am not going to take drug, I am not going to take other things. I want not to be messed up in the world. I live in the world. I try to detach and I will learn my own self. So that is the Atma Kripa. This is first necessary. Unless I do understand this, God will come, Guru will come, scripture will come, no effect. Second step, he said then, Shastra, the scripture. We should read, write the scripture. Many people read scripture, but they make a mess of it. They do not know what the scripture is telling. They take the negative aspects of the scripture. You read the scripture, which is not intention. Suppose when you read Sankara, and you are reading, say, Upanishad. Shankara, in one part if you take, that part he is talking about, which later on he is denying that. He is taking the stand of a materialist attitude. You can quote, Shankara says in that book, that this, eat, sleep, die. That's your life. Are you? No, that's the first point. And then Shankara is building up argument to say, no, that cannot be the goal. So while reading the scripture, you may be caught into the first part and not understand the second part. What is the intention of the scripture? No. So therefore, scripture should be studied. Many people say anything. I have seen many, uh, this last 25 years I have here. They make a very bad remark about this. Suppose reading this book, don't understand him. Ah, this is rubbish. How do you say it is rubbish? First exercise your brain. Your mind is not getting the fine point. At one time you don't understand if it is rubbish, then you are disregarding yourself and these scriptures. These are the sages of experienced sages. This is Sastra, what we are reading. It is a revealed, not revealed that God has come and telling something, but it is an experiential thing. Vashishta has experienced, is teaching Rama, and Rama is God himself, and they are getting that interaction. What level of discussion is this? So you should have to have trust, faith, respect. Just reading one thing and don't understand, it is all rubbish. I, 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 I really got very offended when people talk like that. Not entering into the depth of it, not exercising enough brain to understand that. You are so dull, your brain does not enter there. Eh? And you are saying, oh, the, suppose there is a knife. It's so, uh, what do you call, thick, eh? and, uh, flat. It's not sharp. 
blunt, blunted, and uh, that type of uh, and you you cannot cut the fruit even, and you say, hey, fruit is wrong. Are your brain is so dull that it cannot cut that fruit even. So brain should be sharp. Uh, sharp brain will catch the finer points of the scripture, implication of the scripture. Then, so suppose we are talking in one subject, one hour talk. Someone can take a part of that talk and one or two words. You said like that. Are you no? That was my. I am building up my argument. <laughs> no. So one argument I, I will be discarding the next moment. So you have to get to the conclusion what I meant actually. But if someone does not go there, at the very outset said, oh, you said that. There is a story. There is Indra, the god of gods, and Virochana, the god of the demons. They once heard that they are a, we need to be immortal. And how to be immortal? Tell it, then no one will take my position. Indra thought. I will be eternally Indra and no other God can take my position. I have the highest position, the president's position. I will be all through my life and no one can oust me. No, here is rule, no? After how many years? Presidential election. <laughs> after four. So after four, someone can oust me. But Indra wanted that no one should oust me. So I shall be there all the time. Okay. So Indra thought that way. And the god of demons, they are uh, killing, eating, sleeping, and doing all nonsense. Na? And then the name of. Uh, so they also, he also thought, I want to rule this country. I will to be the god of demons. Okay. So what to do? So they have heard that if you know the Atman, if you know what is Atman, then he will be immortal. As we also reading every time. So two people of two different nature went to the teacher and approached the teacher and saluted with humility, said, Sir, I want to know my immortal nature. Please help me to learn. Guru said, Oh, you want? You are the king of gods. You are the king of demons. Go and do austerity for 32 years. So they went and not eating mass. Cleaning their mind as it were, they went to the forest, ate roots and fruits and kept their mind engaged in thinking of something higher and they came back after 32 years. The son, please tell us. The Guru said, oh, you have come. And then took him, took up the both of them. They, uh, no, he said, go again, 32 years. It is not enough. You have to do austerity more. And like that, 105 years. After 105 years of austerity, they came back to Guru and then they said, okay, no, no, so I am I'm messing up. 32 years, <laughs> 32 years is done. And then Guru said, come. And they took, took both of them in a pool where the unrippled water and fresh, clean water and said, yes, look, those days probably mirror was not there. So uh, water, clean water. So see the reflection. What do you see? What do they see? If we go on the pool and look at ourselves, what will you see? Your body. Then he said, sir, I saw the body. Well, oh, you saw it? Okay. Go and save them because you did austerity for 31 years or 32 years. Eat very well. Uh, and come after some time. So after a few days, they saved and cleaned and ate very well and slept very well and came back. Look, look at them. And they looked there. Oh, I, I saw it. Okay. Then he said, Eshata Atma, this is your Atma, Apahata Patma, which is bereft of all sins. Beep, Shoka, where there is bereavement, no bereavement. Be shoka, be mrittu, where death does not touch, be mrittu. E shata atma, apahata papma, which is bereft of all sins. E shata atma, apahata papma, be shoka, be mrittu. Ajara amara, that you are that immortal, and that is that. Bah! 
the demon god, god of demons, he got the point. I said, wow, my guru told me, who is a Brahmagyani par excellence, that you, he didn't say when I was doing austerity and I look, uh, my hairs are shabby and this and that, but when I was fresh and I ate well and I put my cream all over the body and I look good, then Guru said, this, this is your Atma. So he never take, saluted the teacher and was so excited and went back to his kingdom. And with the beating of the drum, he said, I went to my Guru and Guru has said, your Atma, what is Atma? Nothing to do. Eat, drink, sleep. Well, and this is the teaching and that is the Atma. This body is the Atma. He got that idea. And the, the, the uh, what is called the Indra, he also got the same idea. He was very happy. But he was going back. But he has little finer intelligence. He thought, of that. did I understand what my Guru tell, told? How this body, he pointed out, no? Pointed out this body. If this body, how can it be without decay? It is decaying every day. It is all zero. It has no path. How can it be? It was born. It will end in one day. It has this bereavement and all this here. Then how can this be the Atman, which is birthless, deathless, no? How can it be? He has Shraddha for his Guru. So he thought that I did not understand. See, come the Guru Kripa, Shastra Kripa, Ishara Kripa. This is Ishara Kripa. He will be, if, if Indra was egotistic, egotistic, he said, my Guru does not know. What a fool. He taught me this way after 32 years of my austerity. Nonsense, don't go to that Guru. But it didn't happen. The teach, the student thought, I probably did not understand the intention of my Guru, what he wanted to say. Though he pointed out towards the body, this body, did he mean this body or something else to us? I point out that way. This is your Atma. I took it in the physical level. But physical level is logically, it cannot be. So he went back and prostrated before his teacher again. Sir, I may have not understand your message. But I analyze this body is temporary. Body is born one day, it will die. It cannot be immortal. So I have misunderstood. Eshatatma, Apohat Padma, Vishukho Bhimittu, Ajara, Amara, like that. So how can that be? So sir, please guide me. So the teacher said, oh, you got it. Okay, go another 32 years. Sharpen your mind, clean your mind all the angularities of the mind. Then he went back. He didn't say, hey, what type of guru? You cannot tell me. Even one time, I did so much austerity. This guru is reject. We'll go to another guru. But he did not do that business. And he also did not care for anything. Then second time he went back. And again, guru similar, the same thing he did. Come to the pool, look at the reflection. How is that? Save yourself. Look at that. Who is that? That is your Atman. Next time he thought, oh, now I understand. Physical body is nothing. If there is no prana, energy, not the Deho Atma, but Prano Atma. Eh? Guru in, in, inclined that one step go, one step inside. Body is nothing. Body is surviving so long. Prana is there. When the prana will go, then the body will drop. It will be a matter. So prana is the Atman then. The Pancha Kosha, the five Koshas, five sheets idea, that step by step Guru guided him by the same process. Then again he went back and came back again to the Guru. How can the prana, prana has its beginning, prana is the energy which can be experienced outside. Yeah, it has its source somewhere else. It cannot be. Then mind, then the then third time he understood mana atma, deho atma, body is the atma. Then he rejected that himself by understanding by Guru's teaching. And then prano atma, the energy, that is me. Then that was rejected by himself by understanding, analyzing properly. 
Atman is infinite, unborn, undead, undying. Prana can upsurge, prana can be diminished, but prana is guided by something else. So, what is the power behind the prana? It's the mind. Mind is important. Then he understood intellect. Intellect is behind the mind. Then he understood ego. Ah, then they said, no, 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 not ego. Behind that, that is your atma. That is your atma. So it took 105 years for a, for a God. Look, look at that. For a godly mind, not a demon mind. Demon mind was happy. He got the message from the same guru. And he declared in his kingdom with the beating of the drum everyone, hey Asuras, come, come, eat, drink, sang and be materialistic. No God, nothing. What does? This is Atman. So nurture this one. This physical body is enough. So this is the Sastra. To understand that Sastra, you need God's grace. Otherwise you'll read and get stuck into the first stage. Someone gets stuck into the second stage. Someone may be in the third stage. In the fourth stage, in the fifth stage, but that which cannot be described to go that, that should be the intention of the scripture. So, Sastra Pipa is necessary, God's grace is necessary, otherwise, you will abuse your Guru only. He will say, Guru is all wrong. I am all right, but Guru is wrong. But he has taught, he does not know anything. So, he is an idiot. So, what he has taught you, so it is foolishness. Don't think about that. So you do your thing. So Guru Kripa, Atma Kripa, Atma Kripa, Shastra Kripa, Guru Kripa, and ultimately Ishara Kripa. So these are the four types. So God and the Guru are full of complaints. That's it. God showers special grace and go to the 10, page 10 bottom. God showers special grace upon one who is exhausted with all his efforts by practicing nididhyasana samadhi coupled with intense desire for liberation. Those who are analyzing unreal and the real and diving deep and deep and deeper and contemplating on the real self again and again by analysis that that with, with intense desire to liberation. Two things should be there. It is not for the intellectuals. Intellectually you can go on analyzing. But why are you analyzing this? I want to get out of the bondage of the body-mind complex. So that intense desire should be also important here. The only uh, followed by tremendous renunciation arising of, from the self-grace. If you are having grace upon you, then what you will do? You will not indulge in things which are temporary. You will indulge or assert yourself in that which is permanent which is absolute, which will really give me eternal joy. So that is your own kripa, your own blessings, your own uh, grace is necessary. So that's very important. Renunciation will come then. If you know the goal is this and I am in this position, I will have to renounce this, attach, detach, 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 detach and stand on my divine glory unless you come to that this struggle will continue. Then only does one experience the ever-present grace of God. Under its influence, all obstacles are removed and the true knowledge arises by attaining liberation. The aspirant accomplishes what was to be achieved. Right. So, that is the verse number three. Any question of this? No. Okay, let us read the fourth. That which results from the service to the Guru is narrated here. In our scriptures it is said that to serve your Guru. Huh? First of all, you trust on your trust your Guru. Don't think he's a cheat or he's creating his own intentional mantra and other things to cheat you, to get advantage of you. Don't go there. If you feel like that, don't go. That's your, your intelligent enough to decide that. And then when you go to the Guru, then you have to serve. How to serve? Gita says, Pari Prasneno Sevaya Upadekshantite Tat Tat 
तत्वदर्शी दौज हुआ तत्व दर्श दृष्टा दे व्हेन दे आर एक्टर्स पे ए स्टूडेंट द स्टूडेंट शुड गो विथ ह्यूमिलिटी स्टूडेंट शुड गो फर्स्ट कंडीशन इज ह्यूमिलिटी यू गो हंबल बाउ डाउन योर हेड छे बाय बाय सर्विंग मींस ड्राइंग हिज अटेंशन हिज ग्रेस छे बाय and question it ask the question not for any other purpose only to know here it is says that that guru's service means what and not to go and only physically serve the guru huh? some people do that but that is not much beneficial as i always say be a careful don't be to near your guru more than 3 days Uh, then you will see it is a rubbish guy. Uh, he has so much of imperfection. He is angry guy. He eats. He does. He does this. Does that. And he is my guru. Don't stay very close to them. Rather, sad guru means you sad the mantra. Sad be your japa. Do the instruction guru has given. Intensely practice that and have a realization with it. That is guru will be. real guru will be much happy with that that is the student is really practicing and getting the benefit of spiritual life so that is now the fourth verse talks about that in a different way mahanu bhavo samparkat mahanu bhavo samparkat sanshara navalangane संसारावलंगने युक्ति संप्रप्यति राम युक्ति संप्रप्यति राम दृढ़ा नौरीव नाविका दृढ़ा नौरीव नाविका महानुभाव संपर्का महानु भाव संपर्का संसारावलंगने संसारावलंगने युक्ति संप्रप्यति राम युक्ति संप्रप्यति राम दृढ़ा नौरीव नाविका दृढ़ा नौरीव नाविका What is the meaning? O oh, Ramo, only from a sailor can one obtain a sturdy boat capable of crossing the ocean. That means those who do the business of the boat business, huh? you go to that person who can su- suggest you what is the strongest boat uh, will be helpful for your crossing the ocean. Ocean. So here is the ocean of worldliness. You want to cross the ocean of worldliness, so you need similarly go just so. From the guru who has attained the knowledge of the truth, who does the business of truth, go to that person. Huh? You go to purchase anything. Huh? You you want to invest your money in stock market. Why do you go? A broker. Why do you go to a broker? He understands. He days and night he is dealing. Ups and downs of stock, which is going up, which is going down. What was the tendency yesterday? What is coming last year? They compare, and they are expert in that. Not you have that day knowledge. So you go to that person. Similarly, for spiritual wisdom, where will you go? You go to such a person there who has attained the knowledge of the truth. One can obtain the means to cross over the ocean of worldliness. That is Guru gives us mantra. Guru gives us guidance. and spiritual practice how to do what to do so that is the the guru gives so to go to such a guru so o rama go to the what by what meaning samparka from the association of a mahanubhava means the great soul here great soul is our teacher yukti hi logic here the logic means that logic of how i get rid of the samsara langhane to cross Cross what you to cross? Or not the ocean? Ocean of what? Ocean of the samsara means worldliness. We are born in this world. Our eyes are in the, working, seeing the things of the world. Our ears are always 
getting the sound of this world. So this has taken possession of me. How can I get out of this to a place which is called silence, which is stillness, which is called absolute joy, which is called unruffled bliss? How can I go there? So that will be given by Driho as is given by the uh, uh, sailor. You get a boat. Similarly, you go to teacher to get it. So Mahidara, see the note. Mahidara says, Mahanubhava means here a guru, who is a knower of Brahman. Samparka means relationship, but here it means service to the guru. These are the inner me. That's why we read the scripture. We also want to know what it is inner significance. That's why this teacher, Mahidhar, is a realized soul. His explanation is counter. So we read the Gita, Shankara's commentary, we read. Ramanuja's commentary, we read to understand the inner meaning of this. What is it means? There may be two, three, four mean, meaning of the same thing. Sanskrit is such a language. You can uh, put this meaning or that meaning. But what will be the right understanding? That's why you go to Shankara. Here Mahidara is saying that the Guru will be Mohayam Brahman, Nuara Brahman. And the relationship here means how you relate to your Guru, that is the service. As a result of this service, one attains the understanding and the means to overcome the ocean of worldliness. This is the core message. As only a sailor can provide a strong boat for crossing the ocean, in the same manner, only by the following path of instructed by the Guru, one can be freed from the worldly bondage. Okay, so service here alone, note, is the best means to achieve knowledge. The Lord Krishna said in the Gita, Tadviddhi, that I quoted before, Tadviddhi Pranipatena Pariprasnena Shem, meaning, one's duty to obtain knowledge from the Guru, what? By saluting him, by putting questions to him about the truth and rendering some personal service to him. But people don't follow the other two. They only go to uh, do service to Guru. Uh, I, I sometimes jokingly say our Belur Mat Swamis have maybe 50,000, 100,000 disciples who has got initiation. Everyone wants to say, I shall serve you, serve you sir, and then come with a massage oil. And then the, the Guru will die. If 100,000 people one by one takes a turn on serving the Guru, <laughs> and 100,000 people start preparing, I will want to feed you Guru and bring all the food and you have to eat, then Guru's condition you can understand. That is not Guru Seva. Guru what he has said, the other things, don't do that. Only do the other thing. That's why it's a easy way of trying to, trying to get the high spirituality like in an easy manner. That's not so. And that creates trouble also. So here there's a question of that. Two points that it should be it is our duty to obtain the knowledge from Guru by saluting him and putting questions to him. A spiritual question. What is the doubt? What? Of course you should be respectful to your teacher. But that should not be so much overwhelming question and overwhelming other things. Not listening to him. Uh, whatever you say. You, I, I understand. So one should always be stay in a holy company. Say that is the point. Mahanubhava Samparka. Here they are quoting Brihadarana Bhartika, note 5, who does not progress spirituality with the association of the great soul, who an impure stream also attains purity upon merging with the Ganga. No? Even you see, dirty water merges into a holy land, holy water. The water becomes holy, is it not? In India, you know, we have a holy Ganga flowing from the high Himalayas down to the Bay of Bengal. Such a stretch of river. How many dirty things are adding to the water, pure water coming. But look at that. Whenever it adds to the water of the Ganga, people touch that water as pure. Because with the touch of Ganga, every dirty water becomes pure. The, the potential power to redeem a soul remains in that Ganga water. 
that Sri Ramakrishna is to say, the Ganga Vari Brahma Vari, the water of the Ganga is so pure, it is like the water in the heaven, in Brahma Vari, almost Brahman. So, but look at the Ganga situation, wherever so many things are dirty, things are merging, they do not remain dirty anymore. No one considers them dirty. They consider him Ganga. So that is the idea. In company of the holy, what happens? The power to discrimination between the essential and non-essential awakens in the mind. Profound devotion for God develops and the worldly craving reduces. So, mind it. You are doing your Guru Seva. Are you getting these three things? Anything you do with your Guru, understand, is it making you the analyze between the essential and non-essential. So long you see to your guru, talk to your guru, are you getting this impression? This world is temporary, it is all, God is the reality. Are you getting that inspiration? Or are you extracting that inspiration? If not, you are not doing guru, guru shabha. So it is fundamental, that is a very important, that power to discrimination, is it arising in your mind more? When you go to a holy man, you come to the temple, do you feel for a few seconds even that this, this world in which we give so much importance, it is not that important. God is important. Yes, I love to live in the world. But how to live? To be little detached. And all this lesson, this discriminative or this discernment, is it arising here? Then it is holy company. Otherwise, it is a party. We are not here for party. So similarly, when you go to your guru, get that inspiration. Are you getting inspiration to think that I am understanding the world is not permanent. It is only a temporary residence. We are here and to make our way to freedom. That is why we are here. So first point, the essential and non-essential and that this analysis of discrimination arises in the mind. Point one, remember, when you go to a holy company. Then second point, profound devotion for God develops. Are you feeling a pool for God? That's why it is said it is easy to understand. Well, who is a holy man? To understand a holy man, he said, by his presence, your heart will be leaning towards God. Jahare Herile Hride Spure Krishna Nam. Herile means being in, looking at him, being close to him. Jahare Herile Hride in your heart, Spure spontaneously comes up. Krishna Nam, the name of the Lord. Tahare Janyo to be Vishnava Prada. Know him to be a real devotee of God. No? As you see a lawyer, what thought comes to your mind? Legal issues. As you see a police, what thought comes to your mind? Rules, disciplines, regulation. When you see a judge, what thought comes to your mind? So every personality, when you go, instantly it creates some impression. So when you go to a holy man, what is the sign of the holy man? Do you get inspiration about God? Are you feeling excited to talk about the nonsense of everybody? Or what is all this political thing is going on? Yes, there are places there, anywhere you can do that. But think, that is the holiness, holy samparka. Samparka means relationship. That is called the holy samparka. So, Mane, this is true. These are all wonderful idea to make it practical in life. Hmm. We think Guru Seva, service to Guru, holy man, holy company. We don't understand the impact. Yet is clearly this Brihadaranak Bhartik is giving that idea. Uh, gee, as by that touch, your mind will be uh, turned towards God. You will feel an inclination for God. And you will be able to analyze the, what is permanent, what is impermanent. Ramakrishna said the same thing in beautifully in Gospel of Ramakrishna. And Holy company is prescribed for one who even after instruction is either incapable of assimilating the true knowledge or is unable to remember it. The sadhus repeatedly explain the truth 
and they reiterate it again and again. The glory of Holy Company has been repeatedly praised in all the scriptures. Krishna says that in the Bhagavata, then neither is the particle of water of a place a pilgrimage, nor the particular clay or stone of a statue is a deity. But if they are worshipped for a long time, they purify everyone. Is it not? If you go Ganga water, it purifies with devotion if you practice. No? Otherwise, Ganga water is water. Those who live on the bank of the Ganga, they don't understand the value of Ganga. They use it for filthy things. Yeah? If it is for a devotee, it is so much holy. For Ramakrishna, it is holy. We do in the puja time. We sprinkle water. Why? We think, oh, yeah, I am pure. Even a drop of Ganga water touches our head. We feel that I am pure. So that potential power is there. Is that feeling growing in the life or not? So it is not the particular water of a place or a pilgrimage, not the particular clay or stone of a statue is a deity. And you go to the, our bookshop, we can find so many Ganesha. You can see so many Krishna. Huh? These are all sellable items, no? But when you put add in, put in your room and you add one flower and incense, it becomes a deity. So it is no more the same thing, any clay material or uh, metallic thing is not God. Yes, God in the ultimate sense when you have a realization. But as a student, I don't see that. But I can feel that way when I put it in my altar and wave some incense and flowers and give some fruits and candies to feed. So this is the way. But if they are worshipped, if they are worshipped for a long time, they purify everyone. Uh, even that image, Ganesha will speak to you one day. The same Ganesha which ten dollars to Ganesh, when you purchase, you may say, why not eight dollars? You may bargain that. that. But when you bring it in your room and you put it in your altar with devotion you practice, you can see Ganesha one day came in your dream. You can see that Ganesha you are talking or Ganesha sometimes doing something which is unusual. So your devotion your repeated practice is making it that. However, beholding a sadhu causes instant purification. He says that these take time even. You have to practice this. But if you have a real sadhu, if you see, uh, you get instantly purified. The impact of sadhus are tremendous. Those who are realized, so that's all of you understand. In your life, you have seen some of them. We have seen so many holy people in our life. Really, in their presence, we feel mind is uplifted. You do not do anything, uh, mind will be uplifted in a higher level. Even if they are walking, talking, but you feel that that is a great joy. Uh, as if you are in a uh, joyful environment. Huh? So, sadhus, the knower of truth, are themselves the real gods and the places of pilgrimage. They are renowned as being the roaming holy places and walking images of the Lord. That's why in India, sadhus, the naked fakirs, who have not a penny, the king comes to bow down his head at the feet of that sadhu. You know, there may be fake sadhus, but that is a different thing. But your devotion makes you great. Your devotion will make the Ganesha living. Your lack of devotion will make it a stone. The Hindus were worshipping in the temple. Huh? with utmost adoration, crying and weeping before that. Those who don't believe in the idol, they say idol. And they come and kick. It is a, it is a material thing. So your devotion is the thing which transforms you. If you see a holy man, you can treat him as a, what do you call, doormat. But a holy man is holy man. It is your bhakti makes it holy. And of course, his holiness radiate, but you have to have the sensitivity. If you are not ready to catch that vibration, how can you understand? Here is the vibration. So many vibrations, that's my common example. 500 channels, television channel is here now. Thousands of radio waves are here now. Millions of phone calls, all the massive vibration is here. 
Why are you not listening? Why are you not seeing? Your instrument is not tuned to that. You bring an instrument, television, and click the channel. You see, living, something is going on. Someone is talking, talking, talking. Someone is fighting, fighting, fighting. So real. So, that spirituality is like tuning our mind. And if we can tune, we can catch that level of vibration. Even in Ramakrishna's presence, you have seen many Calcutta Babus will come and they cannot stay there for long. It is too difficult for them to stay in that bad company. Yeah. So they will push, hey, when are you going? Hey, hey, no, no. So then that guy gets up and goes outside and sits in the boat to have fresh air. And if full fresh air will be all your life, you will not get Ramakrishna again in your life. Even being in presence of a holy man, we do not know the glory of that. As some Swami told me, when Swami Premeshananda Maharaj was alive, you who go forward, you read, in the go forward that book, very spiritually instructive book, in the bookstore you can find. So, uh, to, to go to serve him, he was a senior Swami and he needs some personal service. So, I had some time after my uh, college, college ending uh, examination was over. But I was thinking of going to some other place of sightseeing. So, and that, that Swami said, Are your sightseeing will remain all through. But this Premishananda will not live long. He will not get the chance again. So, whatever, that is the instruction. This. These things will not, it is rare to get holy people. And to understand holiness, sensitivity is necessary. Final level of understanding is necessary. The mind needs to be a little purer to understand that. Holy company is exhaust, extremely beneficial for the spiritual aspirant due to restlessness arising from the impulse of attachment and aversion. While interacting with people, the aspirant goes to a solitary place to contemplate on God. However, even there, his internal desires for worldly enjoyments keep him distracted and restless. For this reason, living in a solitude generates a negative result in the initial stages. That's why many people going into the uh, retreat, they call, uh, and they are faced with so much danger because so many bad things are coming from the mind. And I came to uh, see God and all my past Thoughts and ideas, boom, bad, man, bombing, I don't like a, like, like what you call the uh, fireworks, flower, <laughs> sprays all over. For this reason, living in a solitude generates a negative way. Until the desire for enjoyment is reduced a little, all those thoughts cause more trouble for the aspirant and make him more extroverted while he lives in solitude. At this stage, holy company best medicine. By holy association, the desires for worldly enjoyment diminished are thereafter. Even if one goes to a sol sol secluded place, he becomes capable of contemplating on God. So it is glorifying the need of holy company. The primary meaning of the word satsang, we, we use this word satsang, is what is that? Company of the holy. Satsang means sat is God. Sangha is the association. Holy association, meaning association with becoming one with the scripture, supreme self, which is of the essential nature of truth. That means to remain steady in the mental modification of being merged in the form of Brahmo. That is Brahmo. Uh, I, I don't go to the technical term now, no time. All ignorance and worldly bondage becomes annihilated in mind. Uh, if the mind remains for a moment in the mental modification, that mental modification of Brahman, I am Brahman, I am pure in that level. That happens with the holy association. If you have the sensitivity, you can feel that your mind rises up. That's why you feel so much joy with the real sadhana. The secondary meaning of the word satsang is the company of holy people, sadhus, who remain meditating on the Supreme Self, whose essential nature is truth to study the books written by the great souls who are the knower of truth and to read their instructions illuminated by their experiences. 
are also termed satsanga. That is because it is through their instruction that union between the aspirant and the supreme self, whose essential nature is truth, can occur. Therefore, the spiritual aspirant should use his time wisely by studying and reflecting on the scriptures penned by them, even if the direct contact with the great soul is not available. So great soul you may not get always, but good books you can get. And good books don't read like a novel. These books have to be read, contemplated, meditated. See, we can explain this pages which I have jumped over, we can make five classes out of it. Uh, that means think deeply, think deeply. Uh, we all want holy company. We all go for uh, spiritual growth to study the scriptures, the pilgrimage. But what is the meaning of that? And how I can make my way even now being in Hollywood? That's why our one Swami, Swami Swadhanand used to say, it is not Hollywood, it is holy wood. <laughs> holy wood. <laughs> that is the holy wood. We can make that holy wood. Eh? But we can make also Hollywood. Eh? Both are there. So by our own thinking, by your own meditation, we can do that. Om Shanti 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 Hi. Hari hi Om Tat Sat Shri Ram Krishna Panam Astu. Thank you all. We are late by 10 minutes. <coughs> eh? Eh? Oh, acha, uh, please remember um, Swami Tyagananda is the head of the Boston Center. He is the chaplain of the MIT and Harvard. He is a writer, book, and our editor of Prabhupada Bharat, the ex-editor of Prabhupada Bharat. Prabhupada Bharat Vedanta Vishwani, Shama. So, Shamiji will be here speaking on Thursday, no? Thursday. Which day? Thursday. Thursday, at 7.30. That means tomorrow is Wednesday, day after. That is Thursday. Tomorrow will be gospel class here.